November 1965, Vietnam in the Central Highlands. A US 1st Air Cavalry Division has Viet Cong troops in retreat and in the process uncover a secret NVA base near the Cambodian border in the foothills of the Chupong Mountains. The enemy attempt to overwhelm their pursuers with unrelenting and ferocious counterattacks. Little do the communists know that the US are about to deploy B-52 bombers in direct support of ground troops for the first time. 18 B-52s drop 344 tons of bombs on the mountains in one of the early Operation Arclight strikes and in total fly 96 sorties dropping approximately 1800 tons of bombs to drive the enemy back. This operation demonstrated the frightening destructive power of the B-52 as well as its timing and accuracy in proximity to friendly forces. In fact, the image of B-52 squadrons raining destruction on the immense impenetrable jungles of Indochina has become synonymous with the Vietnam conflict. Yet amazingly, the jet lives on over 50 years later and is still going strong. At its inception, the design for the B-52 called for a straight-wing, six-engine, propeller-powered heavy bomber. And it was this prototype specification that was selected by the Army Air Forces in 1946. It was initially intended as a replacement for the Convair B-36 Peacemaker, with the capacity to carry nuclear weapons in Cold War deterrence missions, without depending on intermediate and advanced bases controlled by other nations. However, two years later in Dayton, Ohio, Boeing Chief Engineer Ed Wells and his team were informed by the Air Force's Chief of Bomber Development to scrap the propellers and instead devise an all-jet bomber. Over the following weekend, the team came up with a new design for an eight-jet swept-wing bomber in a Dayton hotel room, crafted a scale model out of balsa wood and compiled a 33-page report. The team's ingenuity impressed the Air Force's Air Material Command and their new design was approved. In 1951, against the backdrop of a worsening conflict in Korea, the Air Force announced the adoption of the B-52 as the country's next intercontinental bomber and approved an order for 13 aircraft. The first B-52A flew on the 5th of August 1954. With each subsequent iteration, the B-52 received enhancements to its performance attributes such as range, power and capability. And between 1952 and 1962, 744 aircraft were built across eight different versions. The current model, the B-52H, made its first flight in 1961 and is still in service today. In terms of specifications and statistics, this most recent upgrade of the B-52 can accommodate five crew members, pilot, co-pilot, weapon systems officer, navigator and electronic warfare officer. It possesses a maximum speed of 650 miles per hour with a cruising speed 590 miles per hour, combat range 8,800 miles, and service ceiling of 50,000 feet. It is powered by eight Pratt & Whitney TF33 P3103 turbofans, providing 17,000 pound-feet of thrust each. Armament-wise, it used to be equipped with a 20mm Vulcan cannon that served as a remote-controlled tail turret. However, this was removed from all aircraft in 1991. It can carry an astonishing amount of ordnance, 70,000 pounds or 31,500 kilograms of various bombs, missiles and mines in a range of different configurations and loadouts. The B-52 has a lengthy operational history given its nearly 70 years of service in the US Air Force. The B-52As were all test planes, but on 21st of May 1956, a B-52B delivered the first airdropped thermonuclear weapon a Mark 15 bomb with a yield of 3.8 megatons over Bikini Atoll in the Cherokee test. Around this time, three B-52Bs flew around the world non-stop, covering 24,325 miles in 45 hours 19 minutes, with in-flight refueling support from KC-97 tankers. This feat demonstrated the unprecedented global reach provided by the aircraft, a tremendous strategic and technological advantage for the US Air Force. 
a number of other world speed and distance records would be broken in subsequent years. The B-52 is also a veteran of several wars. Its first deployment in its B-52B iteration was with the US Strategic Air Command as a long-range nuclear bomber. The following versions, C through F, benefited from its expanded fuel capacity and in-flight refueling capability and were adapted to carry tons of conventional munitions in their bomb bay and external hardpoints on the wings. These versions were deployed from bases in Guam and Okinawa in Thailand to conduct devastating bombing campaigns over North and South Vietnam. Indeed, the B-52 would become a symbol of the air bombing campaign that America and its allies waged over Vietnam in a tragic and one could argue futile Cold War conflict. After the first arc light strikes in 1965, Secretary of Defense Robert McNamara rationalized the use of the B-52 over area targets. Quote, we are faced with very, very heavy jungle in certain portions of South Vietnam. Jungle so heavy that it is impossible to find an aiming point in it. We know some of these jungles are used by the Viet Cong for base camps and for storage areas. You can imagine that without an ability to find an aiming point there, there is only one way of bombing it, and that is with a random pattern. With the force we had, trained as it was in pattern bombing, the military commanders felt, and I believe this was a proper use of the weapons, that these strikes would destroy certain of the Viet Cong base areas. And as a matter of fact, they did. There's no other feasible way of doing it. We propose to continue. And so it was that B-52s were deployed in Operation Arclight from 1965 to 1973, flying missions from their base in Guam to provide interdiction, striking at enemy bases themselves and supply routes, troop concentrations and often providing direct air support to US ground forces. The missions were flown in groups of three aircraft called cells that would drop their payloads from the stratosphere such that the B-52s could not be heard or seen from the ground. The B-52 possessed great tactical advantage and awesome destructive power. It also had all-weather ability and radar-guided bombing equipment to boot. Arclight strikes were crucial in supporting American forces during the siege of Quezon in 1968. In what John Morocco described as the most concentrated application of aerial firepower in the history of warfare, B-52s from Guam, Okinawa and Thailand turned the jungle outside Quezon into stubble fields in a massive aerial bombardment. Arclight strikes would again be indispensable in the 1972 Battle of Van Lok, whereby almost every B-52 in Southeast Asia was called in to attack a massive force of tanks, mainly T-54s, and infantry. Over May 11th and 12th, 1972, an Arclight mission was carried out by the US Air Force every 55 minutes for 30 hours straight, utilizing 170 B-52s and pulverizing the North Vietnamese forces. B-52 strikes would also play a key role in the Battle of Con Tum, again in 1972, as the North Vietnamese realized that large-scale conventional offensives could win the war more rapidly, a phase known as the Easter Offensive. Elsewhere, the B-52 was deployed covertly in Laos and Cambodia to strike at supply lines and bases used by the North Vietnamese forces, a strategy that had little effect, however. In fact, some historians speculate that the devastation wrought by these strikes in Cambodia contributed to the rise of the Khmer Rouge and the bloody regime of Pol Pot. It would also be deployed as part of Operation Rolling Thunder, the gradual and continuous bombardment of strategic targets in North Vietnam from 1965 to 1968. This continuous bombing would be resumed in Operation Linebacker 1 and 2 in 1972 and 73 respectively. These efforts were directed at halting the flow of troops and material into South Vietnam from the north as the Easter Offensive got underway. Unlike Rolling Thunder and Linebacker 1, Linebacker 2 was to be a maximum effort bombing campaign on the north and is referred to in Vietnam as 12 days and nights. It involved over 200 B-52s, 741 sorties and comprised the largest heavy bomber strikes by the US Air Force since World War II. Another 212 missions were flown over the south to support Allied ground forces. As the broader Vietnam War progressed, B-52 crews would have to contend with increasingly capable North Vietnamese surface-to-air missile systems. By the end of the war, the network was one of the most sophisticated the US had ever faced, replete with SA-2 missiles, flat cannons, S-75 radar stations, MiG-17 and MiG-21 aircraft. By the time of Linebacker 2, these defences represented a tremendous challenge. 
Ten B-52s were shot down over North Vietnam, five others were damaged and crashed in Laos or Thailand, and 33 B-52 crew members were killed or missing in action. Another 33 were prisoners of war, and 26 were successfully rescued. Over 11 days of Linebacker 2, the North Vietnamese Air Defense Network launched 266 SA-2 missiles, downing 34 B-52s according to the North Vietnamese. Although the raids were devastating and inflicted tremendous damage to the North Vietnamese infrastructure, there were many civilian casualties and collateral damage, and the flow of supplies down the Ho Chi Minh Trail was not arrested. The B-52's vast airframe has enabled it to be modified extensively over the years with updated navigational equipment, countermeasures and weapons control systems. It has frequently served as a carrier craft for experimental aircraft such as the North American X-15 and NASA X-43 projects that we will cover in detail later on this channel. In the 1980s, the G&H versions were modified to carry air-launched cruise missiles, carrying either conventional or nuclear warheads. Its continuous 24-hour SAC alert duty was ceased in 1991, however. Following Vietnam, the B-52 served an important role in Operation Desert Storm. In particular, the demoralizing effects the conventional low-level strikes had on Iraqi troops. It was also deployed in the NATO bombing of Yugoslavia in 1999, the Afghan war in 2001, and the 2003 invasion of Iraq. The B-52 is intended to serve well into the mid-21st century, with a projected life until 2045. If this comes to pass, it will have been in operational service for nearly a century, an unprecedented amount of time for any aircraft. In the absence of sophisticated air defences, the B-52 remains a tremendous asset, given its large munitions capacity and its ability to maintain a loitering position, delivering standoff or precision weapons, as well as direct bombing. It is this versatility and endurance that have made the B-52 one of the defining military aircraft of the 20th century and beyond. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next episode of Scorch the Sky.